It's time for another Lagrangian mechanics problem. So this one I call the jiggle pendulum. So the idea is that there is a mass on a string of, rate of length r, mass m, and it's connected to a point, but the point's not stationary. This point oscillates up and down uh, with a motion a cosine omega t, so some amplitude. Uh, so let's go ahead and find the equation. Of, let's model this. I'm going to model this in Python, uh, but to do that, we need to find a differential equation of motion. So to do this, we're going to define the Lagrangian as kinetic energy minus potential energy for some variable. In this case, we only have one degree of freedom. I'm going to call that the angle theta. Uh, and then we can use the Euler-Lagrange equation to get an, a differential equation. This says that the partial of the Lagrangian with respect to some variable qi minus the time derivative of partial of L with respect to qi dot is zero, where we, we use this dot notation where qi dot is the derivative of q with respect to time. Okay, so I want to get the kinetic energy of this mass. And you may say, oh, well, it's just polar coordinates. I can use, um, you know, uh, m r squared theta dot squared. Well, that's not true because the this is not really polar coordinates because this position moves up and down. So, aha, caught you. When in doubt, we can always write the kinetic energy as 1 half m x dot squared plus y dot squared, where x and y are the Cartesian coordinates. I know how to do it in Cartesian coordinates. And then I can write u as m g y gravitational potential energy but to do that i need to get x and y in terms of uh theta and r and omega so here's my x right if this is called this the origin right there so x is just going to be the opposite side of this so it's going to be x is r times sine of theta that's not too hard y on the other hand is going to be this distance which is r cosine theta negative r cosine theta but I have to add in this jiggle part up here. So y is actually going to be a cosine omega t. You know what? I want to put this at sine. It doesn't matter, right? I'm going to put this at sine. So it's going to be a sine omega t minus uh, r cosine theta. I did this so that when t is equal to 0, it's at 0. Okay. So now I have x and y, I can find potential. That's pretty easy to put in. It's just mg times this. To get the kinetic energy, I need to find the derivatives. So let's take the derivative of x. The derivative of x is, I'm going to do it under the sheet of paper. So let's write this up here. x equals r sine theta. y equals a sine omega t minus r cosine theta. So x dot is going to be the derivative of this with respect to time. The only thing that changes in here is theta. So I get the derivative of sine of theta is cosine theta, but then I have to take the derivative of the inside too, which is theta. So I'm going to get r theta dot cosine theta. Now let's take the derivative of y, y dot. So right here, this depends on time. So I have, again, sine depends on time, so the derivative of sine is cosine, but then I have to take the derivative of the inside, and that's going to be omega. So I get a omega cosine omega t. Now I need to take the derivative of this part, so that's just going to be the derivative of cosine's negative sine, so I can get plus r theta dot sine theta. Now I need to square both of these and add them together. So I'm going to say x dot squared it's pretty easy. It's r squared, theta dot squared, cosine squared, theta. Now I need to square y. y dot squared. It's, I'm going to actually put this term first. Okay. So I'm going to say r squared, theta dot squared, sine squared, theta. Now I'm going to get two of the cross terms. So I'm going to have plus 2a omega r theta dot. I put all those constants up front. Uh, cosine omega t sine theta. And then I'm going to get two of these, uh, that squared, so it's going to be plus a squared omega squared cosine squared omega t. Now if I add these two terms together, x dot squared plus y dot squared, this term right here 
is going to combine with this term, and I can factor out the r squared theta dot squared, and I'm going to be left with the cosine squared sine squared, which is 1. So this is going to be r squared theta dot squared, and then let's have these two terms, plus 2a omega r theta dot cosine omega t sine theta plus a squared omega squared cosine squared omega t. Now I can write down my Lagrangian, L equals one half M times all of this, R equals R squared theta dot squared plus two A omega R theta dot cosine omega T sine theta. So you kind of get in a little trance when you write this out and especially when you say it out loud, I kind of like that A squared omega squared cosine squared omega t, and then I'm going to say minus mgy, so it's going to be minus mgy, but remember, y is this, so it's going to be minus mg times a, I'm running out of room, sine omega t minus r cosine theta, so there's my Lagrangian. Now I can do the Euler Lagrange. See, is there anything I can combine here? So MGR cosine. Let's just leave it. Let's just leave it. If it's messy, it's fine. Okay. So now I'm going to take this. I'm going to take the partial of L with respect to theta. The partial of L with respect to theta. So I'm looking for any terms that have theta. No theta. There's a theta. So the so I have the one half m times this. So I'm going to get m the twos cancel, a omega, and then I'm going to take the partial of this respect to theta. So I'm going to get m a omega r theta dot cosine omega t cosine theta. And then the partial of theta with respect to theta is this one. Okay, looking for some more thetas, and then here's a term right here. So I have a plus m g r cosine theta, so that's going to give me minus m g r sine theta. Now I need to take the partial of L with respect to theta dot. Okay, here's the theta dot. So I'm going to get, I'm going to bring that 2 down. It's a power rule. I get m r squared theta dot. Here is also a theta dot. So this one's just theta dot to the first power. So the 2's are going to cancel and multiply the 1 half m in there. So I'm going to get plus a omega r cosine omega t sine theta. And then there are no other theta dots, so I'm done with that. Now I need to take the derivative of this respect to time, d dt, the partial of L with respect to theta dot. Okay, so that term's pretty easy. The only term in here that depends on time is theta dot. So I'm gonna get m r squared theta double dot, the second derivative, Right here, I have two time terms. I have this first one right here, a omega r cosine omega t. So the derivative of that with respect to time is going to be negative a omega squared. I'm going to get the omega when I take the inside. r sine omega t. And then I have to keep this term, sine theta. This is the product rule. Now I'm going to take all that stuff plus a omega r, leave a space, cosine omega t times the derivative of this respect to time, which is going to be cosine theta, but then I have to take the der derivative of theta and I get theta dot. Right? That's, wh that's where that other omega came from was when I took the derivative of the inside. So now I have uh, the, the derivative of L with respect to this, and I have this, and these two subtracted equal zero, which means that this equals that. So let's set them equal. Uh, where did my m go? That term came from here. There should be an m, which is important because the mass cancels, right? Every term has a mass in there, so the mass cancels. So I'll leave that off. So let's write this stuff, a omega r theta dot cosine omega t, cosine theta, minus g 
our sine theta equals all this stuff, which is going to be, oh, do I have any combinations? No. Uh, I, well, I have some. Let's just, don't worry about it. Uh, r squared theta double dot minus a omega squared r sine omega t sine theta plus a omega r theta dot cosine omega t cosine theta. So what I want to do is to solve for theta double dot. So I'm going to move all this stuff. I'm going to add this and subtract that from the other side. And then I'm going to divide by r squared. I'm going to do that on one step. Theta double dot equals this stuff divided by r. So it's going to be a omega theta dot cosine omega t cosine theta minus g over r sine theta. And then I'm going to add that plus, and the r divided by r, a omega squared sine omega t sine theta. And then minus a omega theta dot cosine omega t cosine theta. Do any of these things combine? A cosine omega t, oh, look at these. Those cancel, don't they? Yeah. Okay, so I have theta double dot equals, I'm gonna put that term first, a omega squared sine omega t sine theta minus g over r sine theta, and I think that's right. Okay, so let's look at our jiggle pendulum over here So if, if, what if the jiggle is not jiggling? What if omega is equal to zero? If omega, if I put in omega equals zero, this whole term goes away and I get theta double dot is negative g over r sine theta. And that's the equation of a pendulum, okay? And then if you let theta be small, then sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. So that works out fine. Um, what if I put, what if I start the mass down here? So I have theta equals zero theta dot equals zero. If that's the case, then I'm gonna, this term's gonna be zero, this term's gonna be zero. There should be a theta dot somewhere. Where'd my theta dot go? Okay. I guess so. That's not in there. Um, and does that cancel? Okay, whatever. Uh, but then I get zero. If I put in theta is equal to zero, I get theta double dot is equal to zero. And if theta double dot is equal to zero, then it's just going to stay there. So it doesn't really matter that it's jiggling up and down. It's not going to swing. Now that I know theta double dot, I can use my standard numerical calculation, which I'm going to go through this fast. Uh, theta double dot. If I break it into time steps, I can say theta double dot is theta two dot minus theta one dot over delta t. That says, during this small time step, I'm gonna assume that theta double dot's constant, and if I know the theta dot at the beginning, I can find theta two at the end. So I get theta two dot is theta one dot plus theta double dot delta t. And then I can do the same thing for theta two dot, assume that's constant, and that's gonna be equal to uh, delta theta over delta t. So theta two equals theta one plus theta two dot delta t. So I can break this into time steps. Every it's time step, I calculate theta double dot. I use that to update theta dot. I use that to update theta. I do it all over again. So let's go ahead and do exactly that in Python from scratch. So I'm gonna switch over here to Python. I'm doing this in web v Python. So here we are. I'm gonna give you the code. Okay, you can see there's nothing there. I need some constants first, so let's get my constants down. Uh, R equals 0.3, I just made up that. Uh, G equals 9.8. Can you see this? It looks still feels a little small. Okay, um, I need my value for starting off theta. I need my starting off theta dot. So I can say, I need omega. Omega equals two radians per second. Uh, A equals 0.03, I'm just making stuff up here. Um, 
t equals 0, dt equals 0 0.01, uh, theta equals 30 degrees, 30 times pi divided by 180, theta dot, I need the starting velocity, I'm going to say that's 0. Okay, now I'm actually going to animate this stuff. I could just plot the solution in a graph. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to animate it. So to do that, I'm going to make a thing called a pivot. Pivot equals a sphere. It's just the name of the jiggle part. And it's, I'll put it at the origin, vector 0, 0, 0. Uh, I'm going to give it a radius of 0 0.002. I may be too small, 3, 5. Okay, let's just run that. There's my pivot. Yay. Okay. So now let's make the mass. I'll call it mass. It's also a sphere. Uh, oh, let's do this. Uh, X equals, what did I say X was equal to? R sine theta equals R times sine of theta. Y equals A times uh, sine omega times t minus r times cosine theta. So my position of this sphere is going to be e at uh, vector x, y, 0. And it's going to have a radius. It should be bigger. Radius of 0 0.01. Let's make it yellow. Color equals color dot yellow. Uh, let's say make trail equals true. And let's just plot that. Okay, looks good. Now I need a string. And it's going to be a cylinder. Uh, the position is going to be equal to pivot. Dot pos. Uh, the axis is going to be from the pivot to the mass, so it's going to be mass. Dot pos minus pivot. Dot pos. And then the radius is going to be equal to 0 0.002. Let's just try that. There's my pendulum. And it's in 3D if you really want to look it around. But that's fine. Okay. Now, let's just move the pivot. Let's just make sure we have that working correctly. So I'm going to say while t less than 5, rate 100. So rate 100 says do 100 calculation loops per second with a time step of 0 0.001. That'll be in real time. Uh, I'm going to say t equals t plus t. I always forget to update the time. So I want to move the position of the pivot. Pivot.pos is going to be equal to vector uh, 0 a times sine omega times t 0. So I'm just going to move that up and down. It should just oscillate up and down. kind of slow but let's make that let's increase that omega to four okay that's good so that works um, now I need to calculate to in order to calculate the position of the thing I need to calculate theta double dot equals and here I just write in my differential equation that I got from my Lagrangian so I'm going to say a times omega squared times sine uh, omega times t times sine theta minus g times sine theta divided by r. Now I can update theta dot. Theta, theta dot equals theta dot plus theta double dot times dt. Now I can update theta. Theta equals theta plus theta dot times dt. Now I can recalculate x and y right there okay and you'll notice that I don't need to move I, I that X and Y is the X and Y position of my mass so mass dot POS equals vector X Y zero now I need one more thing I need to move the string so string dot POS equals pivot dot POS and then I need to change the axis string dot axis equals mass.pos minus pivot.pos. If this works, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with myself. I didn't even save it. Jiggle pendulum 2022. Because I think I did make this before, so let's save that. Okay, now I'm going to run it.
Check that out. Okay, I'm pretty... So, you can play around with this. Start with different initial angles, different... Um, and it is in 3D. Look, it is. It's, but it's only moving in 2D. Uh, so, you know, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with this, but I just wanted to make it, um, and then we'll play with it later. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to want to do this again uh, with, with SimPy to solve it, just to see if I get the same thing. But uh, there you go. That's that. Okay, I'm going to go. Talk to you later.